Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the DCI number 905 in a US 10B finish. The 905 is a um, is a top latch. Uh, forgive me, it's a top flush bolt that is what is called self-latching. Top only is what you get when you order the 905. This is going to be self-latching, and an application of a self-latching uh, flush bolt, and this is for a wood door, not a, not, it's, it's specifically for wood doors. You would not use it on steel doors. There's a different model for steel doors. We'll go over that. Where you're going to use a self-latching flush bolt on the top. Um, versus a manual something that you physically have to move is in an environment where you have a pair of doors that the active leaf is configured with a lock set, mortise, cylindrical, whatever. The inactive leaf has a strike prep and it's prepped for flush bolts. It's fire rated and there's a door coordinator. And what specifically needs to happen, what are the cardinal rules on fire rated doors? Self-closing, self-latching in all instances, by all means of activation, uh, must a door adhere to those requirements. If you had a pair of doors with a lock and then manual flush bolts and they're fire rated, it's possible that you could open both of those doors. And let's say you had door closers on both doors, they would be self-closing, but they wouldn't be self-latching because it'd be, there'd be no way to automatically latch that inactive door. When you have a self-latching flush bolt on the top combined with an automatic flush bolt on the bottom, meaning there's a triangular uh, activator that's sticking out of the edge of the inactive door so that when the active door closes, it will push that trigger in, forcing the bolt to drop. Your top is self-latching because of the style of bolt. Your coordinator is saying, wait a minute, active door. Hold the active door out, let the inactive close first, and then bring the active door. And all of that hardware conspires to give you a code compliant NFPA 80, NFPA 101, NFPA 80, fire, uh, fire safety and other opening protectives, um, opening a pair of doors. And fire rated doors must be self-latching and self-closing in all instances where there is occupation on both sides of the opening or the potential for it where you kind of don't necessarily need self-latching on an inactive leaf and a pair of doors would be in this in a condo building where it's just an electrical closet that may only be four feet deep there's no human occupation that's happening generally you'll see that inactive door manually held closed with a closer closing device on the active door um, and that will meet uh, that meets code. In fact, it absolutely meets code. It's it's it, it's written, um, but it's a rare instance when you have you know no human occupation on the other side of the door. Obviously, so self latching at the top, combined with a automatic flush bolt at the bottom, is going to put you not running afoul of uh, of code compliance. That is in essence what the 905 is. The 905 is different than the metal door version which is the 805 in the sense that the 905 is meant for a wood door in this in meaning in the the, the way in which you approach mortising the door for the hardware is inherently different when it's a wood door like the 905 versus an extension style 805 an 805 has a rod that runs up the inside of the door, and prepping that door for an extension flush bolt is, well, it's absolutely prohibited to do in the field if the door is not already prepped and it's fire rated. And it's really inappropriate to use a door that's listed for metal doors when you're trying to put it onto a fire rated application. You would use a corner style flush bolt like the 905 because you can envision, if you have any experience with a router, you can see in your mind's eye what you have to do to prep to get this to work in the door. This plate will act as the rod guide, and you'll position this however the doors swing. 
and then literally attaches via screws to the plate in the side, as seen here. You'll just attach that. This also has a clutch feature on it. Um, should there be some sort of a situation where the unit is not going to work correctly, the bolt will still clutch down um, if there's a significant door alignment problem without destroying the piece of hardware. How you get that active door, that once you open the active door, how you get the inactive door open is just with this button trigger. That's all it is. If you have an automatic flush bolt at the bottom, as soon as you open the active door, the bottom is unlatched. It's that bolt is withdrawn. You just have to hit the trigger on the self latching to get you in. And at that point, you're good. Completely code compliant in every respect. So the difference between the 805 and the, and the 905 is the 805 is for metal doors. It's conducive to the structure of a metal door to prep it for such a device or for the door manufacturer. And for a wood door, it's conducive to use the 905 because of the structure of the hardware as it pertains to the preparation that needs to be done on the composition of the door type to make compatible uh, its ability to receive the hardware in question. You'll notice that there's a link below this video to a document called Product Information. Um, yep, and you will see in that document what the automatic looks like for the bottom, for both the 805 and the 905. Here's the, here's the ticket. If you're talking about an 805 or a 905, you mean the top only. If you're talking about an 840 or a 940, you mean the bottom only. But if you're like, wait a minute, I need a set top and bottom, now you're going to deal with an 845, or in this case, a 945. That will give you a 905 top, it will give you a 940 bottom, giving you a 945 set top and bottom. Obviously, the downside of a commercial style bolt like this is using it on exceptionally tall doors where you can't really get up and reach that trigger button. Um, and that is a situation that you have to contend with. If you're trying to put this on eight foot doors, you're going to have to reach up to be able to hit that trigger button uh, to retract that unit. Okay? But obviously you're going to see this material mostly on typical man sized doors that are common, like obviously seven foot. Um, <clears throat> there is a link below this video as well. So the product information is there. It's going to tell us that it's UL listed. It's handicap compliant as well. It conforms to ANSI the A156 series, the dot three subsection uh, for it's listed, what mean, which means that it has been found to be in compliance and therefore approved to be used on fire rated assemblies. All door hardware that goes onto fire rated uh, doors must be listed or labeled or listed and labeled. It cannot be what's termed builder's hardware. It has to be what's termed fire rated hardware and that's what this certainly is. That override feature I had somewhat demonstrated earlier. Um, you can watch how the inner working works and I hit that trigger button. But if I were to hold the par portion of it that moves and then push this down, you'll see that it has an override feature which will prevent damage to the door or bolt should the bolt head be unable to extend into the top or bottom strike because the automatic has the same override feature as well. Low closing force. Patented free floating cams require less than five pounds of closing force of the active door to extend both top and bottom bolts. What that means is it takes less than five pounds to push this closed. A handicap compliant door closer is not to exceed five pounds of force and I don't expect it to be much less at all of five pounds. So this will work uh, compatibly with your handicap compliant door closers. Adjustable bolt rod heads, that means that you can tailor this to suit the exact condition. Low inventory, they mentioned on their product information, really what that means is the only thing that differentiates this US-10B, which is oil rubbed bronze, and it is indeed more accurately called 613 because it is a oil rubbed bronze process, it's not powder coated. The only thing that differentiates this from other finishes, and that is certainly oil rub bronze, is that it will, you just swap out the face plates. That's going to go on there, and your work here is done. That's what it's going to look like. You will, of course, get 
with that, you'll need a T-strike that will go up into the header. That's a two and three quarter strike. You can see why we would call it a T-strike. You're going to then also get fasteners to attach not only the bracket together up at the top, which is going to be accessed through its holes that are here. You'll then get fasteners to get us held down everywhere else so that it's securely mounted onto the onto the door. This strike, I won't cut it out of the package because it's oil rubbed. It will leave a mark. It is two and three quarter tall. The overall width of the strike is going to be about an inch and seven eighths, but these strikes are measured from the center line of the screw hole to the edge of the lip, and they're very commonly about an inch and five sixteenths. This, this is right in that ballpark. That is an ANSI standard for that preparation. Then there is a link below this video, and by the way, available in lots of different finishes, which would be your US 10 satin bronze, and I'm looking at a cheat sheet, US 10B oil rug bronze, US 26 uh, polished chrome, 2060 satin chrome, US 3 polished brass, US 4 satin brass, US 32 polished stainless, US 32D satin stainless. There's then a link below this video to a document that is called template. And that paperwork is most certainly included. It will have more information on here than you need because it's going to give you the top and the bottom. We're dealing with the top. And really the important part of the template, if you're looking at that, is to take mention of its overall size and dimensional properties. Okay. You can see that the faceplate itself is going to be 8 and 17 30 seconds in length. So basically 8 and a half. Okay. That it's going to be 1. Okay, let's back up. So they're saying a mortise of 8 and 17 30 seconds and then a mortise of 1 and a 30 second um, wide. That means that this plate's going to be 8 and a half and then one inch wide. Okay. You can see the, so you'll see the overall length of the faceplate that's got to occur. You can then take notice of the seven and nine thirty second dimension from the bottom of the unit to, well, I'm not sure if it's the top of the door or if it's to the underside of this plate. You'll put a tape measure on that or a caliper on it before you mortise. And the part I've not shown you yet is the dust box. This is a piece of uh, white coat galvanized steel. It's, that's what you're going to look like when you're all said and done. That's the real deal right there. You're going to want the dust box because if it's a fire rated wood door, which it probably is, uh, you will be having the intrusion of particulate slowly over time kind of move through there. Uh, some people will call it an asbestos door, a core door, or maybe a um, uh, drywall core. It's a, uh, or gypsum is a word that you've heard. It's a mineral core product. It's something that basically has no combustibility to it, um, but is a very fine, very fine particle that you do not want to breathe in. So this dust box is really crucial. The point being is that seven and nine, 30 seconds from here to here, the two inch depth from here to here, now you can start to conceptualize, okay, I can understand what I need to prep in my door. And then of course, the only other thing you don't know is how thick the body is. And it's really not determined that you're gonna make your mortise, you know, you don't need to necessarily, well, you kind of do. I mean, you might make this mortise a 16th smaller than the faceplate dimension, you could, um, but that's not how it's being called out as. Then you can see that you have your top portion, which is six and a 30 second mortise from the edge of the door to the back of the plate. You've got the width that's being called out as a one and one thirty second mortise again. So we're gonna be talking six inch by one inch. And then again, the only thing you need to know is the thickness, six by one. Then you just need to know the thickness of the plate, which is probably about an eighth of an inch. It is indeed an eighth of an inch. Um, and that's all there is to it. You're going to make your body preparation to fit the gizmo in all the way in so it's flush with your faceplate. You're going to mortise it all the way up to here, the bottom of this. Uh, you're going to leave your quarter inch radius prep here and here. If you're using a half inch router bit, you'll be good to go. 
Um, and that's everything. The important thing is that you want to be sure that you locate the center line of the latch in the door with the center line of the strike. And what we generally do is just reference that off the center line of the header or what the center line is of the meeting style of the two doors. You may have an inactive, you may have an unequal pair. So go to the center of that and then you go over your particular dimension uh, for that. And it looks like they're giving us a three quarter inch back set uh, from the edge of the door to the center of the bolt. Indeed. So what are you going to make the center line of the header to the center of your strike? Well, you're going to take your gap between the two doors, divide it by two, add that to three quarter, and you're as right as rain. And that's where you'll center your strike plate to make all that happen. Okay. There's also a reference to the 9BFB, which is a fire door bolt, which would be required by code if you were using a top latch only. You can have a situation by which if in the event of a fire, that bottom fire bolt is going to shoot out into the uh, into the opposite door from the inactive to the active door uh, locking the two together mechanically to keep those doors closed in the event of a fire. Okay. Now looking at the rest of the, uh, the extended description I see nothing that I've not covered. Positive pressure compliant UL10C UBC 72 1997 um, Finally there's a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all of the DCI products that we sell, but also a link to the manufacturer's website, as well as a link to the full product catalog. Now, I am personally partial to DCI, and it's because these folks are a well-oiled machine. They have the material in stock. They get it shipped out really quick. They do so with no fuss, no muss. Uh, their inventory is generally very deep, and they are always uh, willing and able uh, to answer any technical questions that you have. They are for sure hardware people in the sense that they do understand the product that they're selling. And if you see their name come up, you may see their name come up not for trim and auxiliary hardware, of which they do have a relatively comprehensive offering, but probably because of their Panex, their series of exit devices that are called the Panex series. And you can review that catalog from that link to the manufacturer's page. Or a time uh, when I did a lot more takeoffs of commercial projects using construction documents, and I would routinely see Panax devices specified. So if you heard that name, it's DCI, and that link to the manufacturer's page will get you there. Any questions on the DCI 905 and a US 10B uh, self latching top flush bolt for a wood door or any other DCI product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.